I'm going to show you how to draw a three-dimensional room using one-point perspective, which is a very scientific way to draw. We're going to start by making a rectangle in the middle of our paper. Keep it kind of small. Use a ruler so the lines are straight. Keep it neat. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a dot in the middle of our paper. This is called a vanishing point. Next, using a ruler, I'm going to line that up with the dot and the corner of the rectangle I drew in the middle. And I'm going to make a line from that corner of the rectangle all the way to the outside of the paper. I'm going to do that on each of the corners. Make sure that your ruler is touching the dot and the corner of the rectangle you drew or else it just won't look right. So again, I am lining up my ruler with my vanishing point and the corner of the rectangle I drew and then making a line from the corner of the rectangle I drew to the outside of the paper. Now that I've got the lines on all four corners going off the paper, I'm going to make tiles on the floor of my room. Lining up my ruler with the vanishing point, I'm going to make lines starting at the floor, um, the bottom of the rectangle, going all the way off the paper. Each time I make a line, I have to make sure that my ruler is still touching the vanishing point. That's a very important step. So again, I'm making lines from the bottom of the rectangle going off the paper, but my each time my ruler is still touching the vanishing point. Now to make the other lines for the tiles, they're going to go straight across horizontally across the paper from wall to wall. Use your ruler and just make lines that go across from wall to wall. As you move the ruler up the paper, make those lines slightly closer together than they were at the bottom of the page. So the lines are farther apart at the bottom, but closer as you get to the rectangle, the back wall of your room. Use a ruler, be neat. Now we'll say this is some kind of indoor zoo or aquarium, and we need giant windows on the right and left walls where people can come in and look at animals or something. Now, we're going to start by taking our ruler, lining it up with the vanishing point, and making lines coming from the outside of the rectangle all the way off the paper. I'm going to keep my ruler touching the vanishing point once again. That's an important step. It won't look right if you don't do that. I'm going to do this to all four corners of my paper. So there's kind of like a ledge before the window starts, kind of like an edge to the window. After that, I can make some um, vertical lines and make some beams or something that separates the windows, just kind of breaks up the space a little bit, look, makes it look nice. After that, we're ready to start drawing some stuff inside our rooms and inside our zoo or aquarium. Now that we've got our basic layouts for our aquariums, Let's put some people and wildlife inside them. Now when you're drawing something like this, it's a good idea if you kind of lay out all of your um, design first, kind of work on the whole drawing at once, moving around. Um, I know details are the fun part to do and they're fun for me too, but your drawings are going to be better if you kind of lay out your whole composition first. I'm going to draw some people now, so just the basic gestures, the basic poses, just get an idea of where they are in the space. We're going to come back later and put in the details. Now I want you to put at least two people inside your room. One in the foreground and one in the middle ground or the background. Just make sure that one of the people is a little bit further back into the room than the other one. Now remember, we're not worried about making everything perfect. We're going to come back for the details. We're just getting the basic idea of where everything is. Now I want to talk about what a headline is. Here's Chewbacca, or three of them. Now, we know that some Chewbaccas are in foreground, middle ground, and background, but look where their heads are. They're all about the same place on the paper, but their feet are not. If there's two people about the same height, 
their heads will always be about the same height on the paper, no matter how far apart they are. That's what a headline is. So think about headlines when you do this project. You can see that with my two people, their heads are about at the same place, even though their feet are not. A lot of what drawing is is just little tricks, and that's one of them. Using the vanishing point to make the room is another one of those tricks we can use when we make art. Now let's start to draw the fish or ocean animals inside the aquarium. Now it is okay to look at pictures when you do this. That's what I did. I'm looking at a picture of a hammerhead shark when I'm drawing this part. Um, you can do whatever you'd like, um, but fill up the space. Take your time with it. Like here, I've got an octopus going on. I'm going to have his tentacles kind of wrapping around stuff. and have some overlap in there. We do want to fill up the space. Now do whatever kind of ocean animals you want. You could even do a mermaid or a scuba diver or a sea monster if you want. Um, it's kind of open. Here I've got a jellyfish. I've got a seahorse. I've got a, you know, some other kinds of fish. And now you really want to fill up the space. Um, and that will balance out your picture a lot. So I want something in the back and the right, left. Um, maybe add some seaweed or something at the bottom. And, um, you know, maybe I'm going to put a door back here just to kind of fill up the space because I'd break up the space a little bit because it looked like it needed something back there. Um, draw light because we could be erasing a little bit. Um, but here you go. Next, we're going to start to add color. Now, I know I'm going to use watercolor eventually. Um, I think that um, is a good way to end these off, um, to finish them up. So I am right now using a ballpoint pen and Sharpies because I know if I watercolor over those, they won't bleed like normal markers will. It is okay to use normal markers. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you do that, you can't use watercolors over that. And I am going to use watercolors. So I'm going to go over all of my lines, kind of darken everything up so I can see it a little bit better going to make this kind of a mixed media piece. So use what you've got. Use whatever you would like. I'm not going to tell you what you can and can't use. There's lots of different solutions to this part of the drawing. And um, you might come up with something I didn't think of. And um, that's great. That's how art works. Crayons will work for this. Oil pastels. All of that stuff. Uh, that's so sometimes it's fun to use a variety of different stuff. I'm going to come in, I'm going to start um, drawing over the checkerboard floor right here. I'm going to use Sharpie again. Um, I am taking my time, um, filling in all of the spots. Just keep going. Don't worry if everything looks exactly like you want it to look. That's okay if it doesn't. My drawings hardly ever look exactly like I want them to. That doesn't mean it's not good art. We're kind of our own worst critics sometimes. We always think our art looks worse than it probably actually does. But take your time with it. Craftsmanship counts. Neatness counts in these kind of drawings. You can use colors that everything really is, local color, like it would look in real life. Or you could use strange colors that nothing would ever be like that in real life. That is your choice. This is where our drawings really come together. Take your time when you do this kind of project. This is one of my favorite projects ever. I think they look really fantastic when they're done. I love seeing what my students come up with. Um, it's a lot of fun. Probably my favorite part about being an art teacher. This can be a difficult project. And, but, you know, like I was saying before, art is just about little tricks. And this linear perspective trick is just one of those tricks um, to drawing. And if you learn it, you could probably really amaze people. I like to jump around a lot um, to different parts of my drawing when I draw. I'll draw a little bit on the left side, then a little bit on the right side, a little bit in the middle, top, bottom. Just kind of work on the whole drawing at once. Then you will slowly see the whole picture coming together. If you color in one direction, it's going to look better. I don't want to see any scribbly coloring of these. We're too old for scribbly coloring, and it also seems kind of lazy to me. You cannot be lazy and do great artwork. It takes effort. I've seen some fantastic artwork done by kids just your age doing these. So I really do believe that you guys can do these. 
little details bring these drawings alive. Like here, I'm gonna give this guy a man bun, I think. Just give him a little bit of personality. I had not drawn a drawing like this, a linear perspective aquarium in a while. So I really did have fun drawing these and I hope you guys do too. It's a fun and very scientific way to make art. And I hope you have fun with it too. Keep with it, a little perseverance goes a long way. Now I did say you could use whatever you wanted to color these and I do mean that. But remember, if you're going to use something like watercolors, you can't use regular markers because they will bleed. Now, Sharpies works great. Ballpoint pen like I used works great. Even colored pencil is okay. But not regular markers if you're going to watercolor. And I think I am deciding to watercolor the last part of this to finish it up. Um, just to put my drawing together. Maybe get some of the water in or something like that. Take your time with these. I really hope you like them. Um, again, one of my favorite um, scientific tricks for drawing. I love this project. I love seeing what my students come up with. Um, it's probably my favorite part about being an art teacher is that I get to see what my students come up with. Um, I really like looking at their art and seeing what um, what their brains can do, what their brains, um, the ideas their brains have. And I hope you like this project too, because I really like it. I think you will be proud of what you have at the end. Now, this is Mr. Walden, and I'll talk to everybody soon.